It is 1978. Loading a ship could take weeks, not hours or days. Cigarettes had no warning label. HIV didn't exist. Saturday Night Fever was a hit. ABBA, Thank You for the Music was released in May this year. I started working. What a year! To load up Polycrusada with tapioca. Nine cargo holds had to be filled. It was a manual operation by 600 to 900 workers. Nine mobile cranes on each side. A six-week operation. 600 workers lived on board, ate, slept, and did their toilet. Over the loading time, we, the crew, followed normal working hours. Six days a week, nine hours per day. The engine room was suffocating. Fans were running on low speed to mitigate the intake of tapioca dust from being sucked in. There was no cooling airflow anywhere. The temperature on the top and main deck could reach 42 to 46 degrees Celsius. It did not get colder further down. It was suffocating. We were forced to escape to deck for air and to drink frequently. Maintenance routines shall be taken regardless. Cleaning of the scavenging manifold and scavenging air receiver is hell. This is work is inside the main engine. Temperature over 50 degrees Celsius is normal. After 30 minutes or so, strobe lights flashing in the eyes. It's a warning, a breakdown is imminent. Get out, up on deck for to cool and drink water, lots of water. Salt tablets were eaten like candy. It took a strong heart and mind to sustain this work. Surrounding the superstructure, locals arranged Thai restaurants and bars to feed and entertain us. After a day of hard work, Thai food, Singha, Mekong and Good Company were welcome. It's called development they say. During the loading the summer of 1978. The operation took 600 workers. It could be as many as 900. During the operation this summer, everyone had an income. Income is food on the table for their families. On the next round trip, the loading technique was modernized. They rationalized by use of elevators that replaced the workers except 90 of them. A two, three week schedule. There were protests and there was a threat of bombing us, today called terror. A Thai Navy vessel was standby, nearby. At least someone to tell my mother what happened, just in case. The loading took, regardless, six weeks. It was lots of startup problems and obstacles. Well, it turned out that way, and far too many lost their livelihoods. Oi, Joy and Pei still had their hands full, as usual. Unhindered by modernization, nature took its turn. Today their daughters are still busy in Kosichang. Maybe even their granddaughters. This is Thailand and this is exactly what does not change here. No matter what we think and feel about it. I really enjoyed the time here as a young sailor. I didn't think too much about it in that age. Three more weeks at sea, and the daily routine settle in. The weekend is a weekly milestone. The weekend starts at 3 p.m. Saturday. A shower and at 5 p.m., a better dinner is served. 
later in the evening a bar night arranged. Sunday, the time for gaming. Deck golf, air rifle shooting competition, and card games. It's also time for sunbathing. Plunge into the swimming pool. Or a picnic on the forecastle. It is a peaceful life without any news. Only the ocean, the sky and the albatross following behind. The ocean is a good place to be. It is peace of mind. We finally arrive in Rotterdam. A six-week voyage is over, full of expectations. We arrive too late, the berth was just taken. Two weeks of patience at anchor followed. It was time for maintenance. The ship side was attended. After two months, finally ashore. Following two weeks of unloading. An opportunity for shore leaves. After Rotterdam. The trip went back southeast to South Africa, Sultania Bay near Cape Town. We got to see daily apartheid up close and learned the real meaning of the word racism. We are loading up a split cargo of ore for partly Yokohama and Kobe, Japan. Following a full-speed trip from Kobe to Kosichang by replacing the fuel-saving eco-injection nozzles to the full-bore nozzles. Being in the engine room was like a week of a rock concert by Metallica and Guns N' Roses. It was really powerful. We loaded up and returned to Rotterdam. Then over the Atlantic Ocean to US, Newport News. From Newport News with Cole to Japan and I signed off after 11 months. Flew back home to Norway over the North Pole and bought myself a new car, cash. What a promising start of life for a young man. Studies for the engineering degree followed. Visiting Bangkok. This day, I am touring the river. Barges passes by. Is it a rendezvous? The smell of tapioca tears in my nose. It s not to be mistaken, I have seen this before. Kosichang memories returns. The place where strong impressions settled 43 years ago. Thailand has changed, so have I. I decide to go back to see what is left. In the end, Polycrusader was a good ship to be as a first-timer young sailor. First engineer Johnny Granholt deserved to be mentioned. He mentored me and inspired to set goals and take an education accordingly. Ina Rasmussen was a good employer with a selection of particularly good sailors. However, the company wound up few years after I left. It was in 1992. I applied for a job by Golanor Offshore, Trondheim, a position at the Petrojal 1, a FPSO. 
the HR manager during the interview, concluded the following. He knew Rekvin personally. He said, if Rekvin who was the HR manager at Rasmussen hired you, so can I. To be recognized by Rekvin was a seal of character and qualification according to him. I got the job. 